Hello everyone, my name is The Flox. In my series of videos comparing the 4800U to Intel Tiger Lake, in my case the 1185G7, all comparisons will use the following testing methodology. Just so you are aware, this introduction video will be reused for each video, so if you've already seen it once, go ahead and skip ahead in the YouTube chapters below. The scope of these tests is to match total system power, not TDP. The reason being is because Intel Tiger Lake actually has a slight advantage over 4800U when it comes to total system power, roughly equating to 1 to 2 watts. Not a whole bunch, but matching total system power is a far more fair metric to compare against, because at that point they would have the exact same battery life. Likewise, API choice will be the best one for whichever platform, and that will be the one shown, regardless if that API favors one platform or the other. On both platforms, I'm running Windows Build 21H1. Windows Power Profiles are set to max graphics performance on battery. PCIe Power Management is set to maximum energy savings. Windows Battery Profile is set to max performance. Additionally, the GPD Win Fan has a silent fan option on the device itself. Since silent fan mode does affect total system power, silent fan mode will be enabled on all TDP below 15 watts. Above 15 watts, Silent fan mode will be disabled. Silent fan mode on will decrease total system power. Silent fan mode off will increase total system power. On the AMD 4800U, I'm running Radeon 21.7.1 drivers. Tuning software is Renoir Mobile Tuning by SBSKI. On the Intel 1185G7, I'm running Intel 30.0.100.9684 drivers the July 14th, 2021 drivers. Tuning software is Cyphrase Bat, which is now TDP version 2.05. Regarding settings, I will make every attempt to use the best tuned settings I can for every TDP. For instance, below 10 watt on Intel 1185G7, it's better for the platform to run an EPP setting of 85%. As you can see here, both settings are a TDP of 6 watt, but EPP mode goes from 50% to 85% and we get a small bump in performance. Additionally, the floor setting for all EPP modes is 1.3 GHz with no ceiling on the max frequency. Again, any Intel setting with a TDP below 10 watt will use an EPP setting of 85%. Any TDP above 10 watt, EPP will switch to 50%. On AMD at 5 watt TDP, the only change I make is to statically set GPU frequency between 200 and 350 MHz. At 12 watt TDP, I set GPU statically to 1.1 GHz. The GPU clock frequency will always be displayed on screen, so you'll know exactly what I'm using, just in case I find something slightly better for whatever I'm testing. Outside of that, 20 watt TDP and above will be using stock dynamic GPU clock frequency, and I will only be changing TDP. That's pretty much all the information you need to know so that you can understand all the settings that I have underneath. Outside of that, I will be saying what settings are in the game in the following part of this video. In this comparison, we're going to be taking a look at the recently released game called The Ascent. I was planning on playing this game via my Game Pass subscription. However, on the Intel 1185G7 version of the WinMax, it crashed on both DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. I couldn't play at all. It did work on AMD's 4800U. What I had to wind up doing was get the digital download version of it from the internet, which is uh, akin to the Steam version, and that one did work on 1185G7. However, it only works under DirectX 11, not DirectX 12. On AMD 4800U, it works under DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. However, DirectX 11 has the best performance on both platforms, so for both I'll be taking a look at DirectX 11. As you've already seen in the previous video, all settings will be at low, resolution scale will be at 100, I am running 1280 by 800 full screen. Up first is the extreme low TDP settings of this particular comparison. Now on AMD I did set TDP to 5 watt and on Intel I did set TDP to 6 watt. However, both of those settings n roughly net out to about 9.5 watts total system power. So this particular segment is looking at 9.5 watts of total system power, thus having the same type of battery life on both platforms. Having said that, even though total system power is the same, we can clearly see that AMD's build is getting almost double the frame rate here. Both of these frame rates aren't really playable, however we are still running at 100% resolution scale, so if we just bump that resolution scale down, you would be able to bump that frame rate up considerably, 
at the expense of image quality. All right, so this next segment, I actually messed up a little bit, but let me explain. On the Intel 1185G7 platform, I set TDP at 14 watts, and initially I got a bit above 18 watt total system power, which is what I needed on the AMD side. However, when action started, the Intel side occasionally jumps up to 20 watt total system power. Overall, the total system power is slightly higher on the Intel side more often than not. Another thing worth pointing out here, I tried as hard as I could to line up the scenes and perform similar actions, but it's it's hard to line things up. In any event, even though Intel has a slight power advantage here, by my eye, AMD still seems to be performing better in this instance. But we are also right around the power threshold where AMD will start losing their performance advantage. A more full look at both scenes will once again be available after this particular segment of the side-by-side. Ending out this video, we're going to take a look at the upper bound tests. Here, total system power lands at 42 watts, and we have a bit of a reversal where AMD TDP is slightly higher than Intel. What's interesting is cutting through this video and looking at these side by side, frame by frame, AMD mostly wins in the frame rate test in this segment as well, with a brief, brief moment of Intel actually performing ahead, which is surprising to me. The only thing that I can think of is that AMD's drivers are carrying this entire game, and if Intel just optimized their drivers for this game, we'd see a blowout for Intel. Instead, we see AMD actually being able to keep up at the upper end of these TDPs. After the side-by-sides, you'll have the full segment to look through yourself. Afterwards, I'll give my brief conclusion.
right, the conclusion for this video and my verdict on this comparison of the new game, The Ascent, that just came out. Largely, the 4800U version of the GP2 Win Max wins across the board. At low TDP, it really dominates. Mid-range TDP, AMD slightly pulls out ahead. And at high-end high TDP, there isn't that lead that I thought Tiger Lake would have. Because in this particular instance, when we take a look at other stuff, especially in DirectX 11 type of APIs, Tiger Lake really pulls ahead at higher NTP. So it's a little weird to see this happening here. I'm going to take a little a further look here, but at the low end TDP, that is for sure stuff that lines up and gels. But the, another thing that we have to talk about, when PC game devs are making games, they target NVIDIA first and AMD second. This game was also made on Xbox, and that is an AMD platform that has similarities with running on PC. So them just looking at AMD on Xbox also has benefits to them looking working on AMD for PC. They don't even look at Intel on PC. I know this because the Game Pass build of the Ascent is completely broken on Intel. It doesn't load at all. I had to get the Steam version to actually have it load. And then even then, only the DirectX 11 API would run, and DirectX 12 was broken on Intel on the Steam version. DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 works on Steam and on Game Pass on AMD. So you can clearly see that they have more eyes on AMD to get running. It's not, it doesn't have anything really to do with AMD drivers are better. It has to do with game devs eyes on Nvidia and AMD only and kind of forgetting that Intel now has a GPU. So largely I want to say, don't take this data point and run with it. This is just a data point for you to have more information. I'm going to be trying to do more comparisons as the days go on. I would like to try to do one per day. If I can't manage that, if work is getting in the way, it's going to be every other day. So hopefully I can get that done and we can show a bunch of varying different games on there and hopefully show you more data. That's it for me, guys. As always, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.